James Thomas is a pro bike fitter with over 20 years of experience. In today's episode, he's gonna go over seven bikes that he loves. Now for the bike that inspired this video, the new 2023 Pinarello X. Now, historically, endurance bikes, they are very lofty, they're, they're really short in the reach, so they fit most consumers really, really quite well. The problem with them is that they are dull as hell to ride. You literally fall asleep riding the thing because they've got slack geometry, long wheelbases, and they're just a bit boring. Cue this. This is an absolute game changer. It's the shortest bike on the market from a reach, a stack and reach pros, uh, perspective. It's also one of the tallest, but look at it. To the untrained eye, this bike just looks like a dogma. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit heavy, but it is a really great looking bike. And the most important thing about it is it fits incredibly well, particularly at the lower end of the size spectrum. Uh, we're fitting these to people who are five foot two uh, and not really having any problems at all. The reach figures are astonishingly short. When I first saw the geometry table for this bike, I, I no, nowhere have I almost fell off my chair. I could not believe that a brand like Pinarello could be so forward thinking in terms of their geometry. It's worth giving um, specialized dimension actually for their new Alley. Their new Alley geometrically is really, really good, but, but it doesn't look like this. Uh, we're selling one of these a day. It's got uh, a threaded bottom bracket, which means it's never gonna creak. Uh, look, it's relatively aerodynamic. It's got swoopy seat stays to give it a bit more compliance. Available 105 Di2 at uh, four and a half grand. Yes, it's expensive, but it is a fabulous looking bike. It is likely to have uh, that typical Pinarello light ride quality, and frankly, it looks gorgeous. One other really key point about this is that it comes in a spectrum of, of different sizes, a lot of which go below the sort of 50 centimeter mark. So uh, particularly for small women, uh, well, sorry, particularly for smaller individuals, there are a number of models, or sorry, a number of sizes to choose from. So you can actually find in some cases with Pinarello that you can have a rider that can actually choose between two or three sizes and it's just a question of how many spaces and what stem length they're gonna have. Uh, so because everything we sell in here has a fit story behind it, we can really get behind this product and it's starting to take away some of our custom sales because you know, we, as a business, we predominantly build custom bikes for our customers. Which brings us on to the next bike. I'm gonna try not to get too emotional about this because this is a real success story for the customer. Um, I have a customer called Giles who's been coming to me for a few years now. Uh, I met him at my previous job uh, at Sigma and we've been working together for a number of years to try and solve some of the problems that he experiences on a bike. Giles suffers from a contraplasia, which is commonly known as dwarfism. So as a result, he has extremely wide feet. Uh, so he's always struggled to find shoes that fit. We've now got him into a, a, a lake shoe that works for him. And uh, last year we started out on a, a new bike project. He's currently riding a, a custom Talbot uh, with 24 inch wheels, which he's been riding for a long time. And it, it, it works for him to an extent, but one of the compromises for him is that it's got 24 inch wheels. And that means that he's always struggling with things like tires and wheel choices. So our goal for, for this project was to try and get him onto a 700 C wheel. The reason the 700 C wheel thing is so important is that you obviously have a million and one options for wheel sizes. You're not compromised on things like tires. So even down, if, even when you go down to a 650 B wheel, you, you can count on one hand the amount of tire choices that you have. And furthermore, it creates complications if you go on holiday and you need a new tire or a new tube or something like that. So trying to get somebody onto a 700C wheel has a number of real world benefits, as well as greater high speed stability. What we did with this is obviously we got 700C wheels. Uh, this is all set to Giles' fit data, which we, you know, we couldn't get him onto a jig, so we had to take it off of his existing bike. Uh, and there was a lot of toing and froing with myself and Giles and Sato to try and get this, you know, absolutely right. And it, it's culminated in you know a frame that is sub kilo. It's going to have you know high end MV wheel set on it. Uh, it's going to be a really no compromises build. But I think the important thing here is that if you look at the offerings out in the real world for riders with the chondroplasia. They're few and far between. The products that do exist 
are nothing like this. They're very much more kind of beach cruiser-esque. So uh, nobody's really catering for this market. I mean, granted, it is a small market, but nonetheless, it goes to show how rewarding selling custom bikes really can be. It's a real problem solver. You know, it goes from this realm right the way up to, you know, riders who are six foot seven, six foot eight, and you know, need really, really massive bikes. The open mind. In a world of fully integrated cockpits and aerodynamic deep truncated tubes, here is a bike that pokes two fingers up at it. It's an 800 gram frame, and this is a bike that is designed around ride quality, ride characteristics. The design philosophy takes a lot, a, number, a lot of design cues from kind of bikes of old where ride quality was really the, the, the most important thing. It's super light, fits pretty well because it's got a relatively short reach figure, and in my opinion, but it also has an ISP, which for me is, is, is a great thing. Nightmare to travel with, but I do, I do love how an integrated seat post looks. This bike, built with Jura Ace and Mavic Cosmic Carbon Ultimates, weighs less than 6.6 .6 kilos. This bike is illegal to race. It is 10,000 quid though. All calls are recorded for training and quality purposes. With regards to specifically the cockpit and what the adjustment range is, I know it's four centimeters or 40 mil. A really small bike comes with a 390 width bar. Does that then mean that you've got four centimeters of adjustment either one? Okay. The new Canyon Endurace, this might be an unpopular opinion for with, with, with local bike shops, but because these bikes are harder to work on and they're you know, essentially taking business away from bike shops, but uh, the new Canyon does have, and it's, it's, a, it's a design cue that they took from the, uh, from the Air Road, which has an adjustable handlebar. So you've got 40 mil of adjustment, uh, 20 mil in either direction. And it just means that you're more likely to get a handlebar, you're able to adjust the bike to, to suit your needs rather than having to change the handlebar. What I would say is that particularly at the very small end, they probably aren't narrow enough. The, the smallest, the narrowest you can get the bar down to is 37 centimeters, which frankly, in my experience, is probably not wide enough. For, so it's probably too wide for most women so who would certainly be riding a triple extra small, uh, but you know, at least there's been some thought process that's gone into it. Historically, the geometry of these bikes is superb. They are very, very short, very, very tall. Uh, again, particularly at the smaller end, you've got, you've got quite a wide range of, of, of different sizes and fits. And you know, it comes equipped with one of my personal favorite products, uh, a, the Urban VCLS seat post. It's a rebranded Canyon product, but essentially it's the same thing. If all bikes came with handlebars like this, you would be able to stock less handlebars. <laughs> So this is some of our handlebar stock. Here's a little bit more of it. Uh, we have to carry quite a wide range of handlebars. Obviously they come in different widths, but not all handlebars are created equal. Some bikes have in full integration needs, so they need a port in the back of it. So we found recently that this little FSA handlebar, which is ACR compatible, this will fit a, a very wide range of bikes. The 36 centimetre bar on this actually measures 34, which is a real game changer for, for smaller women, uh, for smaller riders in general, sorry, I keep saying women, but, but typically small women do have the need for a, a narrower than, than what is thought of as, as narrow um, handlebar. So we go as low as 32 centimetres for a non-integrated bar. Uh, but I guess my point is here that, or Francis's point is that we might not need to sell as many of these. Unfortunately, I think with the small sizes on that canyon, the bar probably isn't narrow enough, uh, but at least the thought is there, at least we're getting there for, for smaller rides. So we had to drop a gravel bike in for good measure. The one we're gonna talk about is the Fairlight Seacon. Uh, Fairlight are a little British brand. They, they make steel frames in the Far East, but have a very strong fit story. Uh, so obviously always gonna get uh, thumbs up from me because you've got a, a massive range of, of sizes, but they come in regular and tall versions. So what that means is you can customize the fit. They've got a million and one brazons for mud guards, racks, and, 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 and additional luggage. So it's you know a great bike for, for bike packing. Comes equipped with a carbon fork and starting price from about two and a half thousand pounds. So it's a, it's a really great bike for you if you wanted to be doing longer distance stuff and you know first foray into gravel. I have a lot of love for them, mostly because these are very, very clear uh, thought process on, on how a bike's gonna fit. Uh, so give them a look. Finally, I mean, we've got to talk about like my, my, my Yeti SB140 is like my favorite thing. It's, 
it's my favorite thing. Uh, it's, it's something that brings me very real joy. I bought it two years ago and it, it, it's something that puts a smile on my face every time I ride it. We took it to the Alps last year, we rode around Morzine, Leger and Devoriaz. And um, I'm gonna go riding next week actually, you wanna come? Hmm. Yeah. It's a full suspension mountain bike that is specifically designed with having fun in mind and getting a bit of air time. Uh, it's you know, 650B wheels, which make it a little bit more snappy and you know, has slightly better handling. Um, I actually made Andy break his shoulder as he tried to follow me down a trail last week. Uh, sorry about that, Andy. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's just one of my favorite things. So I have to say, I have to drop that into this list. Those are seven bikes that James loves. Let us know what your favorite bike is in the comment section down below and subscribe to this channel for more.